Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and this is episode 3 of Ticket Thursday. So Ticket Thursday is a series where I share with you real world tickets that we get in IT and I also show you how to fix those tickets. So if you're new to the channel, I have two episodes that you can check out and I have the most common tickets that we encounter on our work in uh, IT. So if you want to check it out, it's in my channel. And for today's episode, I will be simulating an actual ticketing system to make it more realistic for the tickets that we are going to talk about. So if you're interested, please keep on watching and without further ado, let's get started with today's episode. Okay, so right here I have like a sample ticketing system that I can show you and we can do this realistically and I am going to show you also the actual tickets that we are getting at work and how the user actually put the descriptions on the tickets. I'm also going to show you some best practices and tips on how to close your tickets, how to manage your tickets and such. Okay, so let's get started with the first ticket. So for example, you're new in your job and you are managing your tickets here. You're given an access to the ticketing system. What you're going to do is to prioritize the tickets. So let's say there are like four tickets that just came in today so you should be able to prioritize which have higher priority than the lower priority so higher priority all should always be taken care of first okay so looking at the ticketing system i can see that there are a few high priority tickets so we can look into this which one we are going to take care of first so one ticket says user's account expired and the other one says low disk space on computer so both have high priority that the user submitted so which are we gonna do first so you can always use your judgment based on your experience and your knowledge and it's really up to the company or maybe the team on what they could consider a high priority ticket if it's very impactful for the entire company if there's an outage you could probably need to resolve that first so for example in here there's nothing that impactful and there's no outage yet but this uh, user's account is, has expired which means that they probably can't log into a computer so we can take a look into that first okay so this ticket was actually submitted in my workplace and this is the actual wording from the ticket so the user put user's account has expired and in the description it says i'm trying to log in to any computer at the assignment desk but it is giving me an error message the user's account has expired it is the same case on multiple computers I have tried to sign into. So Sarah submitted a ticket that she can't log into any of the computers. So this is a high priority because if she can't log into a computer, she will not be able to do her job. Okay, so for this user's account has expired issue. I went to Active Directory and searched for Sarah's name or username. So for example, I have opened Active Directory and went to her. The properties of her user account and under the account tab there's an account expires area in here and this end off with the date was checked or marked with the today's date that's why she can't log into any of the computers because it was set to expire on that day so i just change it to never account expires to never and hit apply in here and when I asked her to try to log in again, she was able to log in now. So that's a common error. And if it says uh, this account, this user's account has expired, it's probably her Active Directory account on Active Directory that has expired. So check Active Directory right away for this and it's most likely expired on her account. Okay, so next ticket, for the next ticket, we have another high priority one, so probably should solve that first. So let's open this ticket. So this was submitted by John and he said that he has a low disk space on computer. Uh, the description says, I am currently using computer 
and it says that there's only 69 MB of free space. It keeps freezing and closing programs on me. Okay, so that's also high priority because if he has a very low the space of the 69 megs, it means that he can properly open the system and the apps that he needs for work. So this issue is very common. I have seen this issue a lot, a lot of times at work. Uh, this happens usually on shared computers. Sometimes we have uh, computers that are shared by many users because they are probably assignment computer uh, computers computers that are on public space that a lot of people are using so we are getting this issues a lot if we have those desktop computers like that okay so there are a few ways to fix this error for the disk space so first what i do is to open uh, like file explorer for example and if you go to like for example my pc or this pc go to the local disk where the operating system is installed right click properties and then you can see in here a window that will open for the properties and under the general tab in here you can see the disk space and you'll be able to see the free space in here usually for these issues if there's only very little space left you would open the properties and would see a disk clean up and that's the first thing that i do and i just delete all the temp files the cache and all the garbage that is in there and sometimes it will free up a little bit of space but for this kind of issues if it's a shared computer for example what we do is to remove all of the stale uh profiles that are in the computer saved in the computer because if it's a shared computer most of the time a lot of people log in and over the years uh, those uh, stack up and don't get removed or deleted a lot of times also there's like people who have left the company that still have profiles in there and sometimes their profiles are big like gigabytes of uh, profiles so that piles up and that will that will cause your disk space to become full over time so we can remove the profiles as a solution to this so you can right click on this PC in here and open properties and this window will open and just look for advanced system settings in here and under the advanced tab you can see the user profiles in here and click on the settings and you will see all of the profiles stored on the computer so you can look at the size of the profiles and most of the time if there's a lot of people they would have like over a gig of profiles in here and that would take up the space for your local disk so i've seen this issue before where people have profiles over 20 gigs so that's really heavy and if there's like 10 people with 20 uh, gig that's 200 gig of space that they are taking up so just make sure that the profile that you are deleting in here are not being used and those people who are who have logged into the profile or who have logged into the computer are not actively using this because if you remove their profile and it would probably take them long to log in back to that computer having issues so how to remove the profile you can just right click on the profile or just click on the profile and click on delete in here you will be able to do this if you are an admin also if you're not sure if the file has been used or if the person the user using the profile has been actively uh, logged into the computer you can check on the modified date and when the last modified date was that was the last time that they have logged into to the computer so if it was two years ago you can probably remove the profile because they're no longer using this computer also once you have uh, opened the ticket and you're working on it you can change the status to in progress or pending it depends on what ticketing system you have but usually we put in progress on this so at least it notifies the user that you're working on the issue then you can just hit update in here okay so for example i have deleted the profiles and i have checked that the computer has a a lot of available space now 
I am just going to reply to the user and we will say, Hi, John. I've cleaned up the drive and there should be plenty of available space now. Can you please verify that the computer is working properly and the apps are no longer freezing. Thanks. Okay, so always verify that the user can now uh, use the computer properly. So always respond to the user whenever you resolve the issue. Um, it's not really important for them to know the details on how you fix the computer because a lot of our users don't really understand the technicalities, but just tell, let them know that you have fixed the issue and just use like words or terms that they can probably understand and always verify that it's working well for them because sometimes even if you think that you have resolved the issue or even if it was resolved sometimes it's not properly working for the user so just always make sure that you have verified with them before you close the ticket out okay so i'm just gonna click on send in here and let's just wait for the user on that ticket let's go back to our ticket queue so the next ticket in here unable to launch zoom laptop wireless network adapter not operational these are medium tickets so they are both not that critical but still important to resolve so you can just pick any of this whichever probably is the easier to do so that you can get um, one taken care of so unable to launch zoom let's open this ticket so this one was submitted by laura and she just put unable to launch zoom on her computer uh, on her ticket okay so sometimes it happens that the users don't really put much on tickets they do not put details that we need and we have to ask more questions from them to be able to help uh, resolve their issues so for in here uh, laura didn't even give us the computer name of what computer she's using so we can assume that uh, she's using her main computer but what if she has two computers for example so it's a case-to-case -case basis but if it's very vague like this when you see the ticket what i usually do is i respond with a question hi laura can you please give me the computer name that you are using you are using for zoom okay so in my workplace we use bombguard to remote into different computers in our company so most of the time i just fix issues remotely okay so for example i already have her computer name i can remote into her computer you should always ask first for permission before you remote into people's computer because sometimes they might be sending a really confidential email always ask for permission first you can uh send an email or respond to the ticket hi laura let me please let me know when's the best time i can assist you with this issue thank you okay always ask for permission first and ask where when they are available because sometimes of course they might be doing something important and you just don't want to disturb them and just remote into their computer and freak them out okay so for example every everything is ready you are able to remote into her computer she gave you her permission so for this issue unable to launch zoom uh, there's a few ways on how to solve this issue so this one what i did for this one i replicated the issue myself so i tried launching zoom 
and it didn't it didn't launch for me so what i did is i opened task manager and usually i look into the background processes here so for example here in the processes i found zoom that's running in the background process here so it was at the very bottom of this uh background processes so it was already running that's why it can't launch so so what i did is i just right click on it and end task and when i reopen or relaunch zoom she was able to get into it and it launched so for this it's case-to-case -case basis if it still didn't launch after that after you have uh, closed the background process running for zoom you can try rebooting the machine and launching it and if it still doesn't launch you can try the web browser for zoom if it's running and you can make that a workaround for her for example if she needs to be in a meeting in five minutes you can use the web browser for zoom just as a workaround for the meantime to just get it working and you can also come back to fixing the main the root cause of the issue later on after her meeting and if nothing works you can always reinstall zoom so that's what i usually do for issues like this if it's app related okay so we have our last ticket for today and let's open this one it says laptop wireless network adapter not operational that's uh what Kirk submitted for the ticket and the description says the wireless network adapter is not operational and as a result I cannot see available wireless networks let alone connect to one administrator permissions are needed to troubleshoot further okay so the issue is saying that um, Kirk can't connect to the Wi-Fi because uh, the computer can't detect the Wi-Fi connections and they're not available so there's also a few ways on how to fix this problem this is quite a common issue with laptops and other mobile devices so you should be able to also troubleshoot issues like this as well so for this issue there's many ways to solve this the very first and easy way is to check if the Wi-Fi is enabled on the laptop because sometimes it gets uh, disabled by mistake and that's an honest mistake on the user's part sometimes a lot of users are not very technical and they don't know if they have done something on the laptop or the computer so just always make sure that it has been disabled sometimes there's a button on the laptop that can disable and enable wi-fi connectivity next if you have make uh, if you have checked that the Wi-Fi is indeed enabled, you can uh, go to Device Manager and look at the drivers for the network adapters in here. And you can see all of the adapters. Uh, you're probably going to find a Wi-Fi in here just like this. So for his issue, I've seen that there's an icon, an error icon in the network adapters for the Wi-Fi so that is the issue okay so what I did is I logged in as myself as administrator so that I could make some changes for the device manager and I right click on this Wi-Fi adapter in here what I did is I disabled the device and I re-enabled it after I disable I right click again and enable the device and that worked for the network adapter so sometimes those issues could happen and you just have to either re-enable the device or update the driver okay so that's it for today's episode of ticket Thursday those are some of the tickets that we have in the actual workplace if you have any questions, please comment it down below and I hope to see you guys in next episodes.